Hi YouTube, Darth here. I like a lot of things about Battlefield Hardline, and I intend to continue playing it for the foreseeable future along with Battlefield 4. There's going to be a lot of criticism in this video, and I want you to know that my overall impression of Hardline is still very positive, and that's why I'm going to get pretty passionate in this video. However, there are some things that I just don't understand why they're in Hardline. All of these game features were inherited from Battlefield 4, some were improved, some were changed, some for the worse, and many are back for no reason at all other than because Battlefield 4 had them. I call these the seven deadly sins of Battlefield Hardline, and I'll go over them now. I can safely say that a lot of folks hated the Claymore mine in Battlefield 3, and DICE took steps to improve that in Battlefield 4 with the three-wire implementation of the Claymore. People still hated it, but it had serious limits to its utility and could be spotted by careful players. What I can't figure out is how Visceral took the same premise, an exploding anti-infantry mine, a loathed gameplay element mind you, and rather than being removed from the game, they made it even more useful and difficult to spot. Oh, and players get two of them per life, and they are persistent through death. I'm going to let that sink in for a second. It always feels cheap when you die to this gadget. I played with trip mines quite a bit this last weekend and it always felt cheap when I got a kill using them. They can be put in some ridiculously hard to spot locations. But it doesn't have to be like this. There's a lot that could be done to mitigate how seemingly awful these things are. I feel Battlefield 3 had it right when you killed the player who placed the claymore, or in this case the trip mine, their explosives would automatically be removed from play. It didn't stay around for the entire match, waiting to surprise whoever was unlucky enough to hit the trap. Because they were limited, it encouraged players to use them in places that they were actively defending and not just to pick up kills halfway across the map from 10 lives ago. Additionally, a number of things could be done to make them more obvious to players so it feels less cheap. The laser could be made more obvious, the gadget's explosive power could be reduced, or the gadget itself could emit noise. Almost every other professional gadget currently emits some kind of noise, this at least lets enemies know that danger is near. So I've been saying, privately at least, since the beta, that there are a number of things that Battlefield 4 has fixed in the last six months that Hardline is still suffering with. I'm going to point out some of the more obvious bugs and annoyances that are still persistent in the released game. First, I think I've noticed this way more in Hardline than any other Battlefield game, but spawn bombs are back in a major way. I've seen players start shooting an enemy only to have one, two, three, or even four enemies pop out of him while the fight is still in progress. I've died plenty of times and delivered plenty of pain to players because of this. It's been fixed in Battlefield 4 but lives on in Hardline. I've got to say that having to suddenly kill a player with 500 hit points is pretty obnoxious, but surprisingly more doable in Hardline because of the time to kill. Second, the old problem of incorrect hit notifications on the player has returned. There have been a lot of times where I've had to whip around and check my six because the last bullet from a dying player tells me that it hit me from behind or from a flank. I'll turn only to find nobody there but ghosts. It turns the otherwise useful hit notification into useless HUD clutter. Third, the fade from black time is back. This is the fade in from after you spawn on a player and can lead to a lot of cheap deaths. It can take you over a second to get back to the unfaded game while spawning. Now, it might be part stylistic choice and part load time compensation, and while it shipped with Battlefield 4, it was soon removed. Why it's back in Hardline, I can't say. I'm not even going to talk about the differences in the two games' perceived netcode because it's subjective and the games are mechanically different. There are reasons that players die around corners more, or in trades more, and they're mostly related to the game's time to kill. But that's a whole other topic. Hard counter vehicles are where I think Battlefield Hardline made some unnecessary compromises to make the game feel more like Battlefield. What do I mean by hard counter? I mean the enemy brings a rock, so you have to bring paper. Maybe this was to appease vehicle players from other Battlefield titles, but when I watch armored cars, and particularly helicopters, just completely wreck servers full of new players, I can see that these were totally wrong for the game that Hardline wants to be. Now, I'm not saying that we shouldn't have helicopters or armored cars, but I don't understand why they've been turned into hard counter vehicles. In the betas, the helicopters were far more susceptible to small arms fire. Now, though they do take a minuscule amount of damage, you'd have to waste your entire ammo supply shooting at them to do 25% damage. Because few new players have trunk stingers unlocked and most maps have the pickups far beyond the spawn points, it's a pretty easy task for a helicopter to rove around the map destroying people. The armored car is an even harder counter. It is nigh impervious to half the classes and requires a hard counter in the form of mechanic grenades or players who have unlocked a trunk RPG. Needless to say, it is very much the tank of the game. And did Battlefield Hardline need a tank? I think outside of Conquest, it's highly questionable. Now I know vehicle enthusiasts are going to jump all over me for calling out their pride and joy, and I think vehicles do have a place in Battlefield Hardline. I just don't understand why, as a player, I have to invest hours in a game before I can be afforded the right to shoot down a helicopter. 
Or, what am I supposed to do as an operator when there's an armored car outside my position and won't go away? If this game were Battlefield 3 or 4, I'd be far less ambivalent about this, but in Hardline it feels like a serious discrepancy. For a game that prides itself on its gunplay, it feels like the hard counter vehicles have just been pushed into the realm of why. I'm not sure anybody asked for boosts to come back in Battlefield Hardline, and they've been simultaneously improved and worsened. Boosts are the inevitable answer to the question of, what do we do with all that extra space in battle packs to lengthen the grind and give you something once you've earned everything? Boosts have improved over Battlefield 4 in the sense that they only tick down while you're alive, not merely while you are playing the game. I'm not sure if it's an improvement or merely different that they have been split into categories and further split into one selection per class. Was it really so easy to keep track of one set of boosts and one spot to put them in that many types of boosts and four slots had to be made? Honestly, it feels like an unnecessary overcomplication. What I do know is horrible is that they apply to your in-game score immediately and not merely to the after-the-round bonuses. What this leads to is a complete inability to judge your ability against other players. Maybe you're using a 50% boost and Blueberry McGee is using a 200% boost. In the game, Blueberry McGee is going to outscore you by a large margin playing only half as well as you. You'll have absolutely no idea of how well you're doing in a game and have no ability to judge your own performance. That last part is easy to fix. Do what Battlefield 4 does and apply the bonuses after the round. Sure, it can be confusing to players to not earn from their bonus points immediately, but it only is until they finish one round. I am honestly not sure why Visceral chose to modify this otherwise working model. Tactical Lean is a leftover from Battlefield 4, and I'm sure you've done it and seen it happen. If you get close enough to the edge of a wall, sometimes your soldier will lean around the corner rather than simply peek it. If this feature worked consistently, it would be pretty awesome. However, it rarely does, and how or when it works is not ever communicated to the player. By default, this feature appears to have come over from Battlefield 4 and been stuck into Battlefield Hardline. I know plenty of players turn it off on purpose because it's so unreliable, and it even has a toggleable menu option in the Battlefield 4 CTE. It's completely haywire as to when it works and when it does not, and I don't think the game would suffer at all if it were deleted completely. But if we're going to keep it in, maybe it can finally get addressed so that it works consistently? Something I just can't fully understand is why kill unlocks even exist in Battlefield Hardline. This game's primary unlocking mechanic is based around collecting and spending money, and each weapon still has a kill unlock requirement for each and every tier of attachments. First off, why do I have to play with a gun to make it usable? That doesn't make any sense in a competitive game. They solved this problem for having a weapon with the cash unlock and then threw it away immediately with the attachments. Do players have to unlock these tiers in competitive tournaments? I think not. Second, why does every weapon attachment have two unlock costs? One in overall game time, that's money, and the second in specifically playing with that weapon. They are both technically the same cost, and that's your time. There were many, many other possible options here for making cash more relevant. The only answer I can come up with for the why is simply that the developers wanted players to spend a very specific amount of time in-game. Cash is earned by points which theoretically come in at a steady rate with time played. As a resource in Hardline, cash is potentially infinite. However, an infinite resource has no meaning. Time, on the other hand, still has meaning to players. So I'm guessing this is why they left the kill unlocks on each individual weapon, to force you to put in more time on each and every weapon. It's a strange hybrid and in some cases accomplishes nothing, which is why I still think that the purely cash model could have been so much better. First, let players buy whatever they want with cash. Keep rarer weapons like the ARM and Knockout in the game behind lengthy achievements or buy it now for absurd amounts of cash. That money is still going to pile up though, so lock cosmetic customizations and personal items behind mystery boxes. The game already has battle packs, but because their value is hard to ascertain at purchase and because that value is almost always zero, it falls flat on its face. The mystery box model Model is much more solidly illustrated in CSGO and is quite lucrative. Putting desirable things behind a fake money economy would provide a wonderful way of draining off that reserve player cash. Finally, I want to talk about Commander Mode coming over from Battlefield 4, or as it's referred to in Hardline, Hackers. How did that enemy know you were there? Why is your agent suddenly choking? Why does the enemy team always seem to capture the points faster than you? The answer to all these questions is because of Hackers. Not the kind that break the game with some kind of cheating software, but the kind that are part of the game mechanics that also break the game. The hacker is the one single player that can have an extremely profound effect on the game that goes completely unnoticed, except when you start losing for reasons you don't completely understand. Let me qualify that. Consider the GPS scan from a hacker. You don't know when you're in its area of influence, you don't know when it ends, and you have no way of countering it as an agent. However, you're 100% visible to any player looking at their minimap, even when you're otherwise being carefully stealthy. 
What's worse is that it's completely possible to be on the receiving end of a team that has a hacker and having no hacker to counter them yourselves. You might as well resign yourself to being ceaselessly murdered by enemies that seem to have omniscience. It's yet another one of those things that came over from Battlefield 4 that was clearly not universally loved by players and its major flaws were not addressed. If it were up to me, I'd remove them completely and many server admins already do that. But if we're looking at a curative solution, my first question would be, why do we allow one player to play a game completely unopposed? You can't start a game with just one player on one side and start capping flags. Why should you be able to play the hacking game with no opponent? How is this even remotely fair to the players who are actually playing the real game? And by the real game, I mean the real game. I don't think anybody bought Battlefield Hardline because it has hackers. Furthermore, as an agent on the ground, why can't I see the areas affected by hacker scans? I could at least counter that move by not going there or getting out of the affected area. As it stands, I barely even know there's a hacker playing unless I open the scoreboard and realize that the hacker was the reason I was having such a hard time approaching the objective. Don't get me wrong, playing as hacker is interesting and the move counter move against other hackers is a nice bit of side gameplay. But having a game within a game that affects the one profoundly in which the other side can do almost nothing about makes me scream. So that's a lot of criticism, and if you made it this far, thanks. Like I said at the onset, I'm having a lot of fun with Hardline and I just can't understand these elements of the game. A lot of these are inherited problems that hold back the fun in Hardline or at least feel out of place. What I would love to see is a community test environment for Battlefield Hardline where we can iterate on the problems in the game and really take hold of the fun. I'm sure a lot of you agree with some of the things I said and many will have disagreements. I'd love to hear about both in the comments below. If you're new around here, please take a moment and check out my channel and consider subscribing. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time YouTube.